fish will cause fin rot or missing fins or they'll get eaten by their brothers and sisters from the tanks and they'll be missing fins. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. But as a rule of thumb, especially for newbies, start with healthy fish. It's worth the money to get good healthy fish. If a batch of fish isn't healthy, don't get it. Go find another batch of fish that are healthier. Okay? Uh, and that's important. So just pay attention. Eyes? Clear. Clear. Just clear eyes, no red. And um, gills, you want to be red, not brown. Yes. You want to know why? There's a disease in fish called nitrite poisoning or brown blood disease. If uh, so, in, in a newly cycled system, the fish produce ammonia. Until the bacteria arrive to eat the ammonia, you'll have elevated levels of ammonia. When the bacteria arrive, the ammonia comes down and the nitrite comes up. And I'm sure he's covered that, right? I, I missed that part, but I'm sure he covered that. As nitrite levels come up, in our nitrite with an I, as those levels come up, that is actually more toxic to fish than the ammonia was. Right. And it causes something called brown blood disease. It's kind of like us having carbon monoxide. Our blood can no longer exchange gases or, ga or oxygen, mm -hmm. and we suffocate with full breaths of air in our lungs. Fish have the same thing happen called brown blood disease, and it's from nitrite. And you'll see it in a fish. A fish may not show huge signs of it if it's an early or late symptom of it, but if you peel their gill back and you look at their gills, they'll be brown or purple instead of red. They should be bright red. Okay? Plus liveliness, active, not crazy running into the walls, but active, lively and active. And, and you want to keep make sure it's just, just kind of obvious. Another thing, a stressed out fish, especially if they're stressed from either high ammonia levels or acid pH swings, they'll have blood streaks in their gills, uh, uh, their fins, sorry. If they have blood streaks in their fins, it's a response from a, a, a pretty abrupt pH change or ammonia levels. Better to let the fish keeper heal those up in their own time and buy them later, because if you get fish, you're, you're adding stress to their lives. You're bagging them up, taking them home, go to the grocery store to get some ice cream, you know, however, when you finally get them in there, it's not cycling water, it's not the same chemistry, it's just more stresses. So you're taking a fish that's already stressed and giving it some more stresses. So start with healthy fish, keep them healthy as long as you can. Murray Hallam um, suggests that um, one of the first things you do is to give, give your fish a bath in sea salt. That is a great thing to do. In fact, if you can afford it, give them a trip in a hospital tank for a that's couple of call. weeks. Right. All right. A hospital tank is just a fish tank that's not attached to the rest of your system. So new fish come into a hospital tank. Right. It needs to be an active, cycling, circulating system with all healthy biology, which right. means it could be any one of Max's tanks. Right. So Max could take any one of these tanks as a hospital tank, and he could do that by taking the fish that are in it out, making that the hospital tank, put new fish in there, observe them for a couple of weeks. If they're still good after a couple of weeks, they've passed, move them on to where they're going to go. And you keep it the consistency of salt water, like seawater? No, not at all. Some fish can handle different levels of salt, mm -hmm. but when, 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 he, when you put them in a hospital tank, it can be slightly salty. I actually preemptively put in all my systems one half to one part per thousand of salt. All my systems. Right. For aquaponics, for everything. Sea salt. Plants like it, correct. Yes. Plants like it, fish love it. Fish need it. They need the chloride for their gills. We've talked a little about that. Okay? But a, an abrupt change of three parts per thousand of salt either going three parts per thousand saltier or three thousand parts per, per less salty is enough to break the parasites. So the, the protozoan infections or the fungus or the single celled amoebas or whatever are, are attacking the fish, they'll be destroyed by the osmotic pressure of a sudden salinity change. When we soak in, in fresh water, our fingers get all pruney, right? right. That's because our bodies have relatively salty water. This fresh water that we're soaking in is different salinity and water from the, the they, want to, they want to equalize. So we try to lose some salts and, and the water tries to get water in our bodies to equalize the two pressures. That's a small pressure. Right, so to a single celled organism, when you suddenly have a bunch of water entering its body, it bursts okay. and then it's dead. If you suddenly put it in, in saltier water than it was, it loses all of its fluid and it shrivels up. Right? And that's, that's effective at killing those single celled organisms. So that's why salt works yes. and salt's very good. You can put salt into an active system up to three parts per thousand. Unless you're growing strawberries, you can go to five parts per thousand. Okay? And the plants are just fine. Trust me, I've done it many, many times. I've gone to ten parts per thousand growing things like cucumbers and tomatoes. They love it. What? How does that translate? I mean, like, Parts per thousand is one thing, like for a gallon of water. Man, you're going to make me pull out my calculator. So let's just take a hundred gallon aquarium. Right, 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 right. All right, pull out my calculator. 
100 pound, 100 gallons of water weighs roughly 800 pounds. Right. 800 times 0 .003, three parts per thousand. Yes. All right. Let me do that math. I think it's 2.4, but let me check. 800 2 .4. times 0 .003 equals 2.4. 2.4 pounds of salt. Okay. Wow. Okay. I got you. By the way, granulated, coarse granulated salt weighs about what water does. So you can use a volumetric measurement if you don't have a scale that'll measure out a pound gotcha. or two pounds. Mm -hmm. You can use a old Hagen dazs pint. Mm -hmm. That's one pound. Another one that's two pounds, and gotcha. a little less than half is 0.4 pounds. Right. Not that exact. Okay. Mm -hmm. So volumetric, you can use the the old figure of a pint weighs a pound. Mm -hmm. If it's coarse granulated salt, if it's extra coarse, it's actually a little lighter. Mm -hmm. If it's very fine, it's actually a little heavier. Right. So. It's not worrisome about, I just do a pint weighs a pound when I'm talking about this amount of salt. Plus, I'm always doing 1,000 gallon tanks, right? So that's 24 pounds of salt, and there we go. Right? I get a 50 pound bag, I dump half of it in there, we're solid. Okay. You mentioned, uh, what about sometimes when you buy fish, you see some white spots? Okay, white um, speckles is yes. a disease called ick. I-C-H. It's a very common fish disease. It's present in virtually all aquatic environments. Um, and the reason it's present is when you see it on the surface of a skin, uh, the fish will actually have what look like little salt granules stuck yeah, to its scales. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. that's an advanced stage of ick. That fish is in trouble. Okay, okay. Right. meaning if you don't do something within two or three days, it's, it's dead. What do you do if you see You that? give it a salt bath. You just put it in salty water. You go for a week, put it back in fresh water. Go for a week, do that until it's ha happy, healthy, and swimming. You can keep about every week going back and forth. So let's say you have Most of the time, one bath in salt water will get it, unless it's an advanced case or a resistant strain. Okay. So does that go to get to another fish? Is it contagious? What we're seeing? Absolutely. So, wow. Oh will God. it will it travel to your right, other fish yeah. if everything's dialed in and healthy? No. But when you increase the number of pathogens around you, you're more likely to get sick. All right. Mm -hmm. We're all susceptible we to are. the common cold every day. But if we get in the middle of a room and everybody's coughing and sneezing, we're probably going to get sick because we've literally just increased the number of pathogens we have to fight off. Yeah. So if you put fish that have ick into a system, it was probably already there, but you just increased the chance of that pathogen spreading to other creatures. Now in the case of ick, that little granule that's on its skin that looks like salt, mm -hmm. it's advanced stage, it drops off into a cyst, stays on the bottom of your tank, and it's active forever. Okay. Next time your water chemistry goes out of whack, you get an ammonia spike, you get unhealthy fish or stress or something, the ick will come back and attack them. So it's like the common cold, okay? So keep your fish healthy, you don't have any problems. Salt will cure almost every single disease that you can possibly heal, short of a veterinarian and some fancy drugs. Salt will cure everything you're going to encounter that's worth curing. There are some things that won't cure. What's that? that? The three parts per 1,000. Three parts per 1,000 change, meaning either oh, go three pounds per sal saltier or less salty. They're okay. equally beneficial. Now, a new fish, if it's trustly, it's just a good practice, even if you don't have a hospital tank or you don't want to mess with that, it's a good idea to give it a salt dip, okay? For short periods of time, you can use even saltier strengths. 10 or 15 parts per thousand for sensitive fish, 30 parts per thousand for tougher fish. You give them like a 30 second to a minute dip, maybe a 10 parts, but you might give them five minutes in a dip. Different fish have different responses to salt. Catfish don't like salt, okay? So I, if I were doing a catfish, I might go to 10 for just a 20 seconds, 15 or 20 seconds, and then throw him back in fresh water, and he'll not be happy he doesn't like the salt either. But it won't kill him, and it will kill his parasites. Would you okay. advise him to add that to the fish tank itself? So. I say yeah. yeah. Especially, if I had a new batch of fish, no. I would, I would treat them in a hospital That's tank. Right. Okay? Right. If I had something affect my whole population of fish, like Jed. Yesterday, Jed has had multiple unknown causes of death to his tilapia. But it's system-wide. You can't take a sick fish and put it over here and treat it because it was sick over here in the main system. Right. When you put it back, whatever it was susceptible to is still there. Right. So the only way to get it out of the main system is to treat the whole system with salt. And you do. You can go to three parts per thousand in the entire system and nothing will be damaged, okay? You won't have less performance. I've heard people tell me that they don't, they don't think they have as good a results. I see better results at three parts per thousand than I do the, with none at all. Many plants, if you're growing strictly lettuce, it probably won't care either way. Mm -hmm. If you're growing strawberries, they're probably not going to like anything over three pots per thousand of salt. 
If you're growing tomatoes and cucumbers, they love it. Did you mention the other benefits besides disease and gill, gill, gill? Uh, the health? benefits of salt? Yeah. Well, Water, they need chloride. DO retention is increased? Um, it's increased, but the amount of DO water can hold is decreased. Ah. How, okay. That seems contradictory. DO retain, the, the fish can absorb more mm -hmm. readily. Okay. The amount of water it can hold is decreased. Or I may have those two switched. But one goes up, one goes down, it's about the same difference. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So don't worry, don't, don't consider that as your goal. Not, no, it's not a goal. It might be an added bonus depending on the species or whatnot. I'll have to look that one up now that I'm on film seven times here. <laughs> so, so, uh, you know, but fish need chloride. They must have chloride. So it's beneficial. Plants, mini plants, need chloride. If, you, if you're a hydroponic grower, you're actually supposed to get 170 parts per million of chloride for tomatoes. That's what you have to, you have to add chloride salts to get the chloride for tomatoes. You grow better tomatoes with that chloride in the water than with fresh water. Mm. Okay? Tomato, or Thanks cucumbers too. Because we have a lot of tomatoes in our that system. That might be too. the biggest deficiency I'm running You with. know what else? It makes your tomatoes taste better. I wow. have no salt. If I'm on a well, I have probably no salt. You probably have no salt and you should be adding it. In mm. fact, you can very carefully measure. It's called a refractometer. It's a tool. It costs about 40 bucks. You put a water sample in there, close the lid, look through it, and it'll tell you how much salt is in your water. Bricks? Uh, bricks is sugars. A refractometer is salt. They're different tools. Similar but different. Isn't it okay? that uh, you can buy those veggie wash? Those, I, think a lot of I don't know what that is. To, to wash your, uh, oh, 